Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a very special episode of Esoteric Atlanta. This is an episode that I've been super, super excited about. I don't know if I was telling you this, Kelly, off camera, but I, I was telling somebody, I feel like people are so attracted to these stories because it's the, it's the story of the resilience of the human spirit, really, at the end of the day. Once you get through all the sensationalism, it really is the story of, of how resilient humans are. And I'm so excited to have you, Kelly, on the show. Before we get into this, you guys, Kelly, was a, she's a survivor. I, I didn't want... We'll talk about the whole victim thing later on in the episode. Yeah. But I was like, no, this girl is a fucking survivor. We're just gonna... <laughs> she, she, like, got herself out of this. And, you know, so Kelly does have a book. Um, I'm going to share it here on the screen. Gl uh, unapologetically glorious. I actually ordered it. I was telling you yesterday, it got lost in the mail. I think it's Atlanta's problem, though, so I have to reorder it. <laughs> but I will be putting Kelly's book down in the description box below. As human beings, you know, I this is why we still study Shakespeare and all the, the old writings, because as human beings, regardless of where you come from, what your background is, we all relate to each other, unless you're a psychopath, which <laughs> we'll talk about that later, too. We all relate to each other in these stories of overcoming great obstacles. So how are you doing, Kelly? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here. I, I love your energy. I love oh, it. I love your energy, too. I saw you on, I think I've seen you on a couple episodes on Andrew's, uh, uh, his Andrew Gold's um, channel. I was like, mm -hmm. I have to get in contact with this girl. And we've had a few numerous com uh, long conversations on the phone. I feel like I've known you forever. Yeah, so I'm so excited awesome. to introduce you to my audience. And you truly are such a remarkable human being and you are just like a lot of uh, everybody on this channel is a seeker anyway trying to just figure out um why we're here what's the bigger meaning of life and and this is kind of where i think the story starts with you because as seekers we find ourselves sometimes stuck in situations that we unintentionally got ourselves in and they turn in, out to be cults mm -hmm. or high control organizations and so, and that was your situation with Nexium. So for, I know, I, as I was saying, you, a lot of my audience members have seen The Vow. They have seen Seduced. I will put links to those in the description box as well, guys, in case for some reason you have not heard of this. But I know like in South Africa and some other countries, they haven't gotten that yet. So Kelly, can you just in a very base level, what was Nexium? What was it? So Nexium was introduced to me as Executive Success Program. And the the Executive Success Program was this um, human potential sort of self-awareness guided um, classes that were to help build you as a human being. So as a seeker, <laughs> you know, you try all kinds of things to think, okay, maybe this one has the answer. So I had come to a point really where I felt like I had done so much and it, it Nick seemed to seem like the next step. And these classes just seemed like they were just going to be great. And they actually were. They were amazing classes. And that's what I, I was telling you yesterday on the phone, you guys. Like, And that's one thing I hear a lot of people say with a lot of people who come out of cults. Like, So many people think, oh, I'll never fall for this. I'll never fall for this. But we all fall, fall for this stuff. Especially when we are looking, when we're a good person and we're healthy-minded, we never can perceive it a world and where someone would try to dupe us or someone would there would be ulterior ulterior uh, motives behind and i know it branched off right there was like jeunesse there was all these different elements that kind of in incorporated next so it's like people could come in at different from different angles correct well so next time think of it as a big umbrella with a bunch of different um uh companies and curriculum so and under the umbrella of the curriculum so one level down you had many branches of that everyone had to take the basic curriculum first which was a 16-day course before they could take anything else i took a lot of curriculum and you were encouraged to take curriculum if you stayed in the community like i did yeah it was expensive too they really i actually did the i was doing the math on some of the prices i just heard from people because i can't yeah. it looks like the website website is completely taken down and what somebody would spend in, on a couple of courses, I've maybe spent in 10 years going back and forth to India. Yeah, it was very expensive. And and the people that we were being recruited were already people that had taken courses. So, of course, they are recruiting people like themselves who have some access to resources or have the resources themselves or can ask a parent or a friend to borrow or credit cards or something. So it kind of it was in that arena. 
they and I want to I wanted to bring that up because like when we think about this type type of these high control organizations, they're not looking for stupid people. They're not no. looking for for people who are just down in the dumps can't pay their mortgage. That's not what cults want. They want beautiful people like Kelly. They want beautiful people who make them look good, right? That make them look, because you you already, you know, if you walk down the street, Kelly, as a person, you already look like somebody who has everything together, you know? And so that's, and I wanted to really, really point that out, that cults are not, they're looking for smart people. They don't want dumb people. Yeah, most cults are looking for someone with some type of resource, maybe intellect, or they're willing to work for free, or they have friends that they can recruit, or that they bring something to the organization. And like I said, people are going to recruit the same type of people, right, that they're used to being around. And when I walked into my first class, I remember I was a little skeptical, you know, I had the the normal amount of skepticism going in. But when I looked around, I saw all these people that were dressed really nice. They all had degrees. They are all not, many of them were creative people, artists and actors and architects and business people. So to me, when I walked in there, I felt really comfortable, right? Because they were people sort of like myself. And if they weren't like myself, then there were some people that I aspired to be like. Yeah. So it kind of goes both ways. Yeah. So walk us through. So what year did you join Nexium? What was the first year you started with ESP? Yeah, so I joined um, ESP or Nexium as a whole um, in the uh, January of 2016. And I'd really hit this place where I was like, okay, something's got to give. And my friend had talked to me about these courses probably six or eight months ago. And I was in the shower one morning. I'm like, something, I've got to make something change here. I, I'm just not happy. I feel like I'm missing something. And I thought, you know, I'll call her and see what she was talking about. And so when I called her, she's, oh yeah, these classes, we're having a meeting like tomorrow or something. I thought, oh, serendipity. That's amazing, right? Boom. <laughs> so that's when I went to my first um, introduction to the classes. And were you like, after the first class, were you hooked right away or did it take some time for you to come back for your second dose? Like what got you into like really being in that hamster wheel? And we'll talk so, about yeah. the scarfs and stuff and the, the striped path and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sashes and all Vanguard and all that. So so what it got me was uh, I took a five day course and, and on day four, I believe it was they gave me guy gave my gave me and everyone else an EM. So they had special people fly in to do these EMs. And my EM was about public speaking. I've always been petrified of public speaking. And so they took me back to this time when I was a little girl and I was in the sixth grade and receiving my little uh, certificate of graduation. And they forgot to call my name and I'm standing on, uh, on the, you know, the bleachers all by myself. They pass my name and I'm just standing there and I'm mortified. And that just really stuck with me. And so when they took me back to that time and I realized, okay, that's what's kind of causing this. And then I realized when I was able to talk to the class later about something else, I didn't have that feeling anymore. I thought, oh my gosh, this, this worked. And then I was hooked. And from that point on, I flew directly to Albany and finished up the 16 day that was starting on the sixth day, kind of gave me a day break to fly. And then I started up again and did the full 16 day all the way through. And so, the EM is, it stands for explore, exploration of meaning. Is that correct? Correct. And EM is an exploration of meaning. And I was telling you on the phone, um, Kelly, and it, it seems like from, and I've, I've told you yesterday, I've watched the bout vow and seduce now three times mm -hmm. and you play a very heavy part in seduce the documentary seduce which i thought went into way more detail actually than the vow did of like what was really going on it was very very detail oriented um as to what was actually happening behind behind the scenes but i told you on the phone that i watching the exploration of the ems i was like i want to em because you're right. There are some tools that do, mm -hmm. but this was not Keith Ranieri's creation, was it? He was taking from all these other yes. legitimate cognitive behavioral therapies, correct? Yeah. So an expl exploration of meaning is really just sort of an offshoot of NLP, which is neuro linguistic programming, which is really trying to find out what um, emotional um, thing is going to trigger a response, right? So it's kind of like Pavlov's dog in a way. If you can figure out what the emotional thing is that's holding you up, you can start to realize 
that you can break that response by realizing what it means. Like, does it really mean what I think it means? Or can I give it a different meaning? So it's, it's actually a very good tool if it's used properly. So the person administering it needs to have no agenda, right? They have to, they're not leading you anywhere. Unfortunately, in Nixium, people had an agenda because they wanted you to decide what the meaning was for you based on the ideology of ESP and Nixium. That's such Does that a, make sense? Yeah, and that's a really important thing that you hit on. And I want to, I want to, I, wanna, I think that's so important. I, I know, like we say in yoga, the teacher's job is to eventually not be needed. And so I, for any organization that's high control, whether it's self-help, religion, spirituality, business, fitness, the person that's providing the service, their job is to get you to a place where you don't need them anymore. Mm-hmm. But in a high controlled situation, that's why it's called high control. They want you to continually come back to them. And, right, They're in control. And they're, that's where you have all the thought reform happening, the indoctrination happening. All these people are doing things that are going against their own best interest. And they don't realize they're doing it because they think they're doing something for the higher good. It's very, it's a very complex situation. It's, and it's so manipulative. And I think that's why it's so freaking important. You know, I was laughing, I was thinking when you were like in the shower and you're like, oh, it starts tomorrow. I was like, I would be like, oh yeah, that's a God wink. It probably was a God wink, but for the reason you didn't realize at that time. (laughs) Because, you know, it's, yes. uh, I saw in one thing, I think it was Sarah Edmondson that was like, I was looking for purpose. And I'm like, well, girl, you kind of got your purpose. Like, it might not look the way you, it might not be instantaneous, but, you know, it, and I and I just appreciate all you guys for, for speak, all whistleblowers and all people from everywhere, from all different organizations that come out and say, this is what's happening. Because these behaviors from people like Keith Raniere, who was the head of Nixium, are the same across the board. They they play mm-hmm. by the same playbook. And that's, um. I know we spoke about this on the phone. So for those who aren't aware, Keith Raniere was kind of regarded as like this philosopher, correct? Like a scientist, a philosopher, like yeah. what, he was kind of blown up to be this like larger than life messiah almost. And that did happen over a course of time. And he purported to be, you know, one of the top three problem solvers in the world. He supposedly could play piano at three years old and speak other languages. And he had all these special gifts, apparently, that I'm not, that really weren't true. Um, Was he intelligent? Absolutely. He was a very intelligent manipulator. And so as time went by, people began to revere him more and more and the lore became bigger and bigger. And so people started to believe all of these things and not question them. And we called him Vanguard. He wanted to be called Vanguard inside the centers. And that, um, I want to point that out too, guys, because I, I think I told you yesterday on the phone, uh, it's customary in like India that the if you call your teacher Guru or Guruji, it's the student that names the teacher that. The teacher never asks to be called. If you're in a situation where somebody is asking you, and I know in Nixium, I, I heard they would say like, well, you know, you call a judge a judge or you call... But that's a very different situation. It's very different. A judge and a guy leading a, it's very different, right? So now when you're saying, thank you, Vanguard, <laughs> you don't say, yeah. thank you, judge. You know, at the end of every opening of a classroom, we had um, the, a mission statement that everyone, including new students, would repeat or read off because we didn't always have it memorized. And at the end, it was, thank you, Vanguard. Did we... In- and we encourage the students to do that. We didn't tell them they had to. But once you're in the community, if you're not doing thank you, Vanguard, people are like, hmm, you know, so you eventually start to do that. It's slow. It's slow manipulation. It's just yes. really over time um, just puts him in this. And I laugh. I don't know. Uh, I, I said he acted like a messiah. But I've just recently found in my research that in the missing books of the Bible, that the word messiah actually, actually, that probably does fit Keith Raniere because it means a phallical pillar otherwise known as a penis. Interesting. That's what Messiah means. Really? So Keith and Neri, you're both that penis. Like <laughs> that totally makes sense. Yeah. Oh um, wow. <laughs> it's, and I for those who don't know, he had kind of this right hand wing lady named Nancy Salzman. And mm-hmm. she herself is now she got what was her prison sentence? Like four years? I think it was four or five years. Yes, she's currently serving uh, her apprentice. Mm-hmm. I and mean, she was actually in a lot of ways from what from an outsider looking in, she was kind of 
in a way, the manipulated brains behind the operation, because she was the one that like actually had the credentials, correct? Right. So she had, I forget what credential it's called, but in NLP. So it was pretty far up there. She's uh, like a master of NLP. And she was the one who would implement the curriculum. So create the curriculum and implement it after he came up with the ideas of what it should be. His ideas were coming from a place of how do I control people through the use of this curriculum? If I can teach them to do X, Y, and Z, then I can control them. Now, no one knew this. I'm not even sure if he totally knew that in the beginning but i know there was a part of him that was because if you look at the curriculum and break it down there are places in there that are clearly made to to manipulate and control yeah and he um so you guys would go into this so people could you know people could come in and out of nexium just take the courses leave Mm -hmm. and not really get involved in the organization as a business correct Uh, most people did so about fifteen thousand people went through the courses or a a portion of the courses. And there were probably at the time I was in maybe three, 400 coaches at the time. So there, that was the community. The community also extended out to new students who weren't coaches who maybe would do something, a different curriculum called ethos that they could do weekly sort of on the side, which was the 16 day curriculum broken down weekly, meeting once a week. And they were part of the community, but they weren't really on the inside inside if that makes sense they're like on the fringe they were those kind yeah on the fringe and they kind of were in and out and they weren't super super committed the people like myself who were coaches we were very committed a lot of time a lot of um labor a lot of effort a lot of everything yeah. And that was designed for a reason, for sure. Of course. He, got, he yeah. got you in, and now we've got to keep upping the stakes. we got to keep moving the goalposts. we got to keep, you know, and, and I know in a lot of just um, narcissistic relationships in general, which can be business, can I'm not talking about just romantic relationships. In the beginning, there's a lot of, like, love bombing, which is part of the grooming process. And you also yes. have these breakthroughs with these actual cognitive behavioral therapies that mm-hmm. are beneficial. And then you get to this point where you kind of, it's like a grooming process where now you're like dependent upon, or you think you're dependent upon this person or this group. And then you start to kind of get knocked down a little bit and you got to do things to rise back up. And it just becomes Mm -hmm. a a mental just enslavement. And so, so you decided that you were going to make this course that you had all this benefit. You decided to make that your business, correct? And so you, you went on that path to becoming a coach and, Will you explain this, the the scarves to everybody that you guys wore, what that meant? Yes. So once we became a, well, when you're a student, you wear a white, what's called a white sash. And as a student, you can earn um, up to four red stripes, and then you're eligible to become a coach. So a red red stripe might be uh, taking the curriculum. A second one is recruiting people, like two people. And I forget what the third and fourth is. And those are given to you. And then you're eligible to become a coach. The coach has a yellow sash and the same thing is applicable. You earn your stripes up. They're a little bit harder. Well, actually much harder. And then you can become a proctor. And when you become, and that's an orange sash. And as a proctor, now you can start earning money by helping teach classes and um, running a center and things like that. So up until the orange sash, there's no money involved. It's it's basically free labor. And I was, you know, doing everything, cleaning toilets, <laughs> the whole nine yards. Oh yeah. <laughs> So you're That's like at, you're like, you're like in Colt University at that point. Like <laughs> <laughs> that was a coach call. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was <laughs> very low level. Of like, this is just weird. Why am I cleaning toilets? I mean, I don't have an issue with cleaning toilets, but I sure do seem to be cleaning a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, then I got to go home and clean my own. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, you know, it's 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 funny. So now. Did you open up your own center where you where you live, or where, where there was there already a center around there that you worked for? How'd that work for you on your path? So I live in Orange County, which is about an hour and a half, two hours from Los Angeles. Los Angeles had a center that they were trying to build out, actually. Orange County had no center. I was trying to get a center built in Orange County because I had recruited many people here who wanted to take the ethos classes and more curriculum, but didn't want to drive to LA. But we were all told, oh, you're just entitled. They need to drive up to LA. I'm like, I'm sorry. These are business people, parents. 
people who are in school, they don't have time to drive to LA, you know. So I was trying to get to Proctor as fast as possible in order to open my own center, which caused a lot of issues for a lot of people thinking that I was trying to disrupt things. And, but I just believed so much in this curriculum. I thought it was helping people. I thought it was helping myself. It really was a great program on a lot, on a lot of levels. Once I took it apart and was able to look back on it, having not been in the, in the organization anymore, I could definitely see places where there could, I, this, the curriculum could be used as a tool to gu- misguide people. Yeah. If that was your intent, only if that was your intent. Yeah. Well, that's, we say on my channel a lot, I remind people, and this comes from the law of one, even if we look at science, you know, since Keith Ranieri labeled himself a, you know, scientist, the darkness can't create anything. Like even you think about photosynthesis, like, so when we mm-hmm. look at darkness, we look at people who are dark, they, they can't create anything. Darkness can't, can't do it. Only thing the darkness can do is steal from the light and invert mm-hmm. it. The light is something that can correct or can, 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 can create things. So like when we look at lately, even like if you even look like Scientology, like Dianetics, the reactive mind, that wasn't L. Ron Hubbard's creation. That is like a legitimate, well, that's a lot of yoga. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of what you're talking about with EMs is spoken about in the old yoga text. Mm-hmm. And that's why this is so important because I do think it is important not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And you're correct. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of these, I spoke to someone yesterday about the yoga cults. A lot of these, these theories, if not taught by a healthy minded person, an empathetic, compassionate, normal person can be twisted. Absolutely. And that's, yeah. You know, and that's why it's so important to, whenever you join an organization, be a yoga shala or uh help out help self-help any kind of organization you need to really look at is there power coming down from the top is there controlled power coming down is there like one charismatic leader that people revere in a that's just doesn't seem it seems a little off i mean it you have a cult there it, it's so it's like one two three i i have a little thing i say cult you know charismatic leader utopian society um, love bombing and thought reform. I mean, those are the love four, that. those are only four of the many flags, but I feel like those are easier to remember. And they're, those are pretty significant when you have those together. And, and thought reform is a little like, what is thought reform? Well, it's like anytime anybody's trying to get you to change your belief system yeah. and they're trying pretty hard to have you do that. And you're not, and you're feeling, okay, this is a little bit much. That's, that's usually thought reform. And and so. we said like I know I listened to what you just said it too like anytime you would have uh, it seems like anytime anyone would have like an issue like something isn't right if you tried to say something they would turn it around on you correct and be like well you're obviously right. entitled since you don't want to spend you know two hours sitting in traffic every day <laughs> which to me is hysterical because if I was a business owner I would want a business in Orange County because Orange County is a lot of money like <laughs> like that's so I was like. Funny. Kelly entitled deal like they, that was like everyone said I was entitled all the time and it was funny because every time I would say you know something doesn't seem right and my intuition might be saying this or that and they would say well is there data in that because this was a science driven um, data based curriculum so there was no room for intuition if you couldn't prove it you can't prove intuition scientifically supposedly and so they would push that in my face too so i was entitled and intuition has no place here and your reiki practice and your homeopathy practice you know there's no data in that and you know it's it's not I don't, how can you say that what you're doing is is good for people and so there was always that going on for me. So I was always second guessing myself and trying to find the higher value of what I was doing, which was trying to become a better person. So I, I did let some of that stuff go, which you should never do that. No one should ever do that. That's common with cults, I find, is they do yes. try to like down, they try to like conf- gaslight you about your own intuition and your own gut feeling. And um, I know I was, I was like in, in yoga, we, we really promote your gut feeling. So if you're at guys watching, if you're in a yoga class where they're trying to downplay your gut feeling, you might be in a cult because that is not what the yoga, the yoga scripture oh. very much about your gut. Your, they call it your siddhis, your intuition. 
you know, yeah. that that is, that is your, my friend. To, oh, and by the way, I didn't tell you this before we started uh, filming. I have a friend, Tamara, down in Australia. She was a big reader for a lot of the celebrities. She's been following this, following this whole story for a very long time. And I was speaking to her on the phone this morning and she was like, you tell that Kelly that she has so many, so many supporters down here in Australia. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. Oh my gosh. That's, uh, thank you. Thank you, you. You have, you guys have a lot of support around the world of people just, it's, again, it's that, it's that hero's journey. It's that, holy shit, this was a David and Goliath story for, if you guys really sit back and think about, I mean, for those, you know, the Brothman sisters were backing Keith. I mean, I don't know how much money was behind. I mean, to try to take him down was really an act of God. Well, you know, Sarah Edmondson and Mark Vicente and Bonnie Peace and Catherine Oxenberg were really instrumental in making this happen, along with other people as well. Um, but they were really, I mean, Sarah going on on the front of the New York Times showing her brand was, I mean, I, want, I almost want to cry because I know how hard that would have been. I, I, I can't even imagine how scared she was at that time. I mean, now things are a little different, but for her to do that was beyond brave, in, in my opinion. And I don't care what anybody says about, you know, who that, and, you know, they try to break it down and who's guilty, who's not, whatever. But to do that against what we were up against, all of us to speak out, I mean, they were the brave ones, really. Well, I think I, I think you're brave as well. And I know you spoke about this with, uh, I think it was one of your interviews with Andrew Gold about, um, and I love he was the one that said, and, and I've never, I've told you, Kelly, I've always had really good teachers, but I haven't been in narcissistically abusive relationships. And that in itself is a cult of one. So mm -hmm. we've all been in that situation before. And it is mm -hmm. to, to stand up and say like, yeah, this happened to me. I fell for this and I'm going to, I'm going to overcome it by helping other people either recognize the red flags or or come out of it themselves like that is brave as well that is so you have to give yourself credit for that too because what you're no, doing is you. extremely brave and um and, and I, I think a lot of people like my friend and tomorrow in australia <laughs> a lot of people recognize that and, and apply, uh, what's the what's the line courage is not courage doesn't mean you don't have fear courage means you look fear in the face and you do it anyway yeah. Um, and, and that's even if you're shaking you still do it and so yeah. let's talk about that for because how you know if if dos had never happened i've been thinking about this for a long time mm. and we you know we see this in the vow we see that there were, were there were already groups of people that had tried to take keith ranieri down in the past and it never worked mm -hmm. and i'm like god if dos had never happened right would nexium still be running today but that's the thing about narcissists narcissists never know when to stop they never Correct. know when that last little, when that, when mm -hmm. that straw that's going to break the camel's back. And yeah. so let's, so with the Nexium, as there, and I'm, as an outsider looking in, there's all these different compartments and classes and groups. There's the Jeunesse women's group, which somebody had said that was really the beginning of DOS, which you had. I think so. Them. Yeah. I took those, that curriculum in Mexico city. Yeah. And that, that really looking back now, that was the setup for DOS. That yeah. was the setup for the ideology to, it was so misogynistic and it was all there. That was the whole control thing, that whole control let, piece. Boom. Can we talk about that a little bit before? So we see how, because I think people will be like, why the hell would these really intelligent women just all of a sudden sign up for this secret sorority where they're giving collateral and they're branding themselves? It doesn't happen overnight, does it? No. And I write about this in my book in one of the chapters when I was being uh, recruited into this organization called DOS. And it was told to me that it was called The Vow. And it was a secret society of women, of sorority of women, of kick-ass women who were going to do these amazing things in the world. And I was being recruited by, at that time, I had many coaches during um, my time in ESP and Nexium. This particular coach was recruiting me and she was sort of right above me in my line of working my way up the stripe path, which is a sep separate piece of curriculum, right? Yeah. So I didn't really want to tell her no for a variety of reasons. I didn't want to disappoint her. I didn't want to be seen as not measurable or accountable. And I was sort of interested, right? These are supposedly, now I didn't know who was in this organization because it was secret, but these kick-ass women like, okay, what are they doing? Now, when she did say measurable and accountable, 
I have to say, I was like, oh my God, I hate those words. I'm so tired. I don't want to be any more accountable. I don't want to be any more measurable. But I wanted just to kind of see what was going on here because, but at the same time, when they said, she said, I had to give collateral in order to know more about this organization. What popped up for me immediately was, oh my God, my husband, my family, if I give any kind of collateral, now they're involved. And that's where I put the brakes on, or at least tried to put the brakes on was at that point when the collateral came up. And that's the funny thing I told you on the phone about, because I've, I've heard you say that before, because that was your gut too. And the one thing, and that's why they yeah. try to get you to dismiss, like to get rid of your gut because they want to, and, and, and it, it is, so these women are, they've already been conditioned and it is the genetics mm -hmm. curriculum from what I was hearing as an outsider. I'm like, oh my God, yeah. this is not female empowering. It was no. so aggressive towards women. You know, mm -hmm. what they say, you're a little princess, you're held in a bubble. The, I mean, it was like- We don't earn anything. We're parasites. We rely on men. We trick men. We do everything we can so that we don't have to work. Um, just all kinds of things. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's, it's so the mind of an abusive person mm -hmm. to do that. And, and I mean, I was horrified listening to some of it. I was, I, I was, when we were, we, we were rewatching Seduce for like third time last night and, um, <laughs> Catherine Oxenberg, the more you watch the documentaries, the more things you pick up on. Cause oh, yeah. the story is so sensational, like women branded. I mean, it's so like shocking when it first came out for the, for uh, those of us who were not in the organization. Um, yeah. So the first time you watched, you were like, holy shit, you know, but the second time you go back and watch it, Catherine Oxenberg's mother was like, I thought it was weird. Like she just <laughs> cracked me up. <laughs> she says something else uh, her mom says something else too that's hilarious and i wrote it on twitter it was i forget now what it was but she was hilarious her mother oh so funny. Oxenberg's mother oh yeah it was so funny Elizabeth of Yugoslavia. i was like this woman is <laughs> cracking me up I, know. Like, I thought it was weird <laughs> like, <laughs> like she was throwing her under the she was throwing nancy under the bus i mean that was like worth everything like, i think that's what i wrote something like that but she totally was just like throwing her under the bus and I was like oh my you go princess you uh, from Yugoslavia <laughs> she was like this idiot talking about this <laughs> I know. I know. was cracking up laughing I guess we had missed it because we were so into the story he was like well yeah. don't rewind that we ran out a of oh times. my gosh he was so funny hysterical um but yes and, and that and I think too and it's like and that's how grooming works, though, because even if somebody were to come in off the streets to just take a genetic, they'd probably be like, what the fuck is this? Like, this Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. And we were prepped, right? You have had to have taken the 16 day first. Then we were prepped that this first uh, eight days of Jeunesse was where they go over what we just talked about is going to be really triggering for you. So just know it's so triggering and but you'll get through it. And so you're expecting it to be triggering. And when it is, you're like, OK. It's triggering, but what am I missing? I need to go deeper into myself, like with yoga, right? You Things come up through your body and you want to listen to them. But because we were so um, trained to listen to it through the lens of Nixium, not through our own lens, that we would say, okay, well, maybe there's something in this that I'm missing. And okay, maybe I haven't been a big earner in my world, in my life. Maybe my husband has been the more of the earner. So, okay, I guess that's true. You know, so you can kind of justify some of these things that they were saying if you're looking through the lens of Nixium, right? Now I look back and go, oh my God, I can't believe I even thought that was an, any truth in that whatsoever. And you have to also know this was sandwiched between other things that were useful and were truthful, right? So, you have Jeunesse curriculum, a couple hours of it, then sandwiched on top of that, a different topic that is not related necessarily to gen what we were talking about earlier in Jeunesse, which does make sense and is helping you, right? Does that make yeah. sense? So oh, it's yeah, not I just straight stuff. It's like you, so it gets very confusing. It, and it's probably very much designed that way for yes. a reason. And I mean, I'm thinking like the way, cause I, you know, my sister is a stay at home mom. She has a college degree, but mm -hmm. she's got three children all under the age of 10. She's, she's running them around. Her husband has a really good job. They are, they do very well financially. She's very, her kids right. are in private school. She's very blessed, but her job 
having three oh. children. And one, she, they had a COVID baby, so one's really little, one that, you know, so she's got a to toddler, you know, so I go to her, her house is very clean, but it's always like toys everywhere, you know, sure. she's constantly, so, so when I hear people say that, I want to smack them, because I'm like, all the women across the world that are working their asses off yeah, every day. I know. To keep I know, their but, kids alive yeah. and to keep them healthy. Exactly. And I, I raised kids myself. I'm raising kids, you know. So I was, you know, there was always that question mark for me. But wait a minute. I, my contribution to this marriage, and my husband's never in a, even once ever, ever made me feel this way yeah, about yeah, not yeah. contributing. Yeah. But, you know, they're talking about, and then I start thinking, well, gosh, maybe I haven't been contributing as much. And where am I maybe being a little ungrateful? Or, you know, you start to question things like that and you start to, think, well, maybe, you know, maybe I'm doing something wrong here. But, you know, there were those were questions that we had, and they would be shot down by like Nancy, and she'd turn them around. Well, have you thought about how entitled you actually are? And there we go again, that word again, and oh, gosh, maybe I'm a little entitled and take him for granted and whatever, you know, so you get into this mindset that sounds crazy now. But then it just felt like, okay, I'm working on myself, and I'm trying really hard. So, that's how this happens. It's just a constant level over level over level. And then people who, that you at the time respect and believe in are telling you other things. And, you know, Nancy Salzberg did some really great things for me. Yeah. And she helped me with some really, a lot of things I was actually struggling with. So I, I really do give her credit for that on some level. But she also did some kind of crap, you know, a lot of not so good things. And she probably was the ultimate. I mean, she stuck around with Keith Ranieri for the longest from the to beginning. the end, yeah. Um, we'll talk because I do want to talk about that when we talk about there about the the line between victim and abuser and where that gets kind of gray and murky and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but with DOS, so I, I'm trying to like I just want to express to the audience like no normal person would just wake up one day and go, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to join a sex cult and I'm going to get branded <laughs> with some guy's initials with no anesthetics <laughs> and I'm going to give collateral and this is going to be really fun. And I'm going yeah, no. 500 calories a day. And this is just going to be great. Like, this is my whole mm -hmm. life. Nobody, no little girl goes to bed at night dreaming about that's what she's going to be when she grows up, you know? And so mm -hmm. that's what's crazy to me. Here I am. I'm looking at like my brother-in-law, my niece, my oldest niece, who's eight. Her daddy is her best friend. I mean, she told my brother-in-law all the boys she has crushes on who she wants to, I mean, she loved, I would never tell my dad that, but and I, I, he treats his daughters, I mean, he's strict on them, but he also treats them like princesses. He pays attention to them. He plays with them. And so mm -hmm. you look at the sick mind of Keith Ranieri, when you look at what happened at Dawes, he was demeaning you guys and demeaning you guys, mm -hmm. and demeaning you guys, prepping you to go into this horrific, like, the more I watched, after, when I started to repeatedly watch it, I would get so emotional when they would get to that mm -hmm. part, especially in the vow, because the more you listen to what people are saying and putting yourself in that situation and the amount of, I mean, I'm shocked that nobody, we can't say the S word on YouTube, but that nobody removed themselves from the earth plane. If that's, you know, if you guys know what I'm saying, because that's where I probably would have gone in my head if I was in that situation, because you're invited to join this like top secret badass women you can't tell you can't even tell your husband sorority they ask you for collateral in the beginning i think people thought oh like take a picture of your boobs that's it but then they're asking for like what deeds for houses uh and every every week or every month i believe i, I found out later that they were asking for clap more and more collateral so the collateral just went up in value each time and people were got to the point and this would be something i would have to do where they're just making shit up because my life has been fun, but it has not been that scandalous. So there's not a whole well, lot of. They ask you to make it up. That's what they asked me to do. We'll just make something up. Make something up about your business that you are a, that you're a fake and a fraud and you're defrauding people. Just do a video of that, Kelly. That that'll work. Yeah, that's what they were asking you to do because you didn't have any big scandalous thing. Most of the collateral, if it was verbal or written, was made up. So I, yeah, I mean. And and what they would say. So if you're like, I, I'm not comfortable with this. Say like, oh, so like your words. Not well. If you're if you're good to your word, you won't have to. Wor they would twist it, right? You're not being very measurable or accountable. Don't you want to grow, Kelly? I mean, the only way to grow is to do this, and you need to give collateral so we can keep it a secret. So then I can tell you more, and we need you to be you know faithful to us and and everything else. So there was like this whole. 
thing. And I, I, like I said, I put the brakes on and just sort of avoided this person for a couple of weeks because I didn't want to say yes. And I didn't want to say no. So right. I was in that kind of really funky place. Couldn't talk to my husband about it. Felt very uncomfortable with the collateral. And fortunately, everything blew up around that time. I was about so to say, that was like a out. God save because everything it was like right. such a save. And I actually want to get into that with you too. But, but so people, people, okay. So people hand over their collateral and now, so what does DOS actually stand for? Shoot. I usually write it down, but it's something it's, uh, it's, it's Latin. Latin. <laughs> it's Latin. And, uh, I, I think it's in my book somewhere, but, uh, it stands Dominus. for slave master over obedient servant, something like that. So I wanted like master. It's, yeah. It's a master slave. And it's, it's yes. so like this exercise. Like it's not really master slave. It's an, ex it's an exercise. Right. Yeah. Um, but so you get in a situation where you have your slave master, who's a woman who's texting you all the time to, to do like, what are the readiness drills? Like, what was that about? What was, so readiness drills were basically, and I, I actually never did these because <laughs> I was struggling just to like get through the days of Nixium because I was so overworked. But the uh, readiness drills were you would have to respond to a group or in in the set with DOS, your slave master, within 15 to 35 seconds or something like that. And if you didn't respond night or day, then you would get a punishment, which um, you'd have to, you know, do 100 push-ups or whatever you decided that your penance was going to be. So when you look at readiness drills, I believe, you know, militaries around the world have used types of things like this. And if you didn't respond to your readiness drill, <clears throat> they would come after you, get you, think there was something wrong. Um, but it was also a way to control people and indoctrinate people into the system of, of being ready all the time. I mean, so, if your if your if your job is to protect the people and the military for times of war, I can understand that. That's your job. Yes. But yeah. I I would fail right then and there because it takes me forever to respond to text message sometimes because my phone's not on right. all the time. You know, and I'm and I'm like, what? If but you'd have to now? have it. You'd have to have it with you all the time. And if you want an airplane, you'd have to let everyone know I'm going to be on an airplane for X amount of time. You would have to be leave it on all night. You have to respond to it in the middle of the night, whatever it was. And if one of your team members did not respond, it could be that the penance would be everyone else in the team would have to do whatever that penance was. Uh, so yeah, so it was it really turns, crazy. It turns people against each other. It, it, it's, it's, it's very much a walking on eggshell situation, which I think Absolutely. is a red flag. Like you should not feel like if you feel like you have to walk on eggshells within a group or with a person, then that's a huge There's a problem. Flag. Because stuff like that, like that's just to be a normal human being, you should not expect it to a return text message. That, that just should not happen. Like you should have understanding that people have lives. They have children, they have husbands, they have jobs, they're driving. Mm -hmm. They can't respond right away. And I think, I think that, you know, so, so That's yeah. control. It it's was control. control. But it's one other thing I wanted to bring up really quick about the Latin, which excuse me, um, is so interesting. So if you take the word nexum, N E U N E X U M in latin it means some it's indentured slave now if you take nixium to just look, so you take n x i v m you take out the x you put in so n so then you put in you take out the um e you put in an x you put i v m and v and u are interchangeable in latin anyway you just yeah. you're moving around a, one letter basically moving it over you have nixium is in plain sight, and not a lot of people know that. Well, and that's so if you ever look, yeah, look up Nexum, N E X U M, anywhere on the internet, and it'll come up with indentured servant or slave. And Nixium is very close to that. You just she just put in an X, took out the E, and the U and the V are um, are interchangeable in Latin. This is why I tell people to always do their research because. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, but us as normal, healthy people are like, oh, cool name. Like, whatever, dude. Like, everyone's, no one wants to hurt me. Like, this is a self-help. Right. Girl, exactly. You know? But it's literally, yeah, it's right there in plain it's sight. It's plain sight. And I would never have looked that up until, I think I read that somewhere, or like in the Frank Report or something. And I, I had to go look it up. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's so close. I'm sure that's what he was doing. I mean, that's what I was telling you last night. We, the, I was even watching this over and over again. My boyfriend looked at me. He was like, you totally would have fallen. You would have done this. He was like, you, he said the only thing that saved you was geography. There was just not one around you. 
I I would have I would have absolutely and I take I as a yoga student I take a lot from my in my but you're correct my teacher my teacher in India shows me what to do as far as like the posture but as far as the emotions that come up that's an individual experience if you're crying sometimes he'll be like why fearing like why fearing like why are you afraid and but he never answers that question for you it's it's right. your own personal journey and that's and that's that's the difference is that there was there's nobody at my shawl in india no one's guiding you as to how they're just acknowledging that, some, that and they'll, like, as, as i told you in a yoga shala like if you have a moment where you're emotional usually the teacher will just leave you they won't draw attention to it and they just kind of let you have your moment and that's yeah. that they move on there's no drawing attention to it there's no why are you doing this well let's there's no talking about it it's just right you you I think a healthy person will realize that other human beings have the right to have their own experience and have their own um, objective or subjective ex understanding of their experience because everybody's life is life path is different. And so, you know, that's mm -hmm. one thing I think EMs are good because yeah, that, that, that kind of comes from the yoga idea too, that we do attach certain thoughts to actions and the action itself is not the thought. Yeah. That's very much true in yoga as well. But yoga takes the the path of, but you're a spiritual being, and that's what you need to understand. Is that you know yoga? The Yoga Sutra says is that human suffering comes from this idea that we're attached to our thoughts, and we think that our body is is what's real when it's not. Because, it's, but if this isn't real, then what is real? Mm -hmm. Your soul, exactly. Your spirit. Yeah. That's what's real, and that's what's yeah. eternal. And once you realize that you can enjoy your life because this too shall always pass. And you mm -hmm. are a perfect fractal of God that just your soul chose to know itself by coming and having a human experience. The body is the Shakti is the expression of the soul. It's not the mm -hmm. soul, but it seems like with Nexium, it was almost twisting that saying, well, we don't have data to prove that there is a soul. So let's work with the, from Keith Raniere, he was manipulating the mind, which right. is the mind is the mind is manipulatable, you know, yeah. Absolutely. The soul isn't, but the mind is. Um, yeah. And so, so with the branding, they, so they would lure the women to Albany, which mm -hmm. is hysterical to me that that was their headquarters and they were trying to get everyone to move there. I was like, you could have picked a better place and maybe more people. <laughs> want to so bad. Albany, I'm sorry. It's just, <laughs> ew. Yeah. Like Miami, Hawaii, like <laughs> somewhere great. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Maybe you could pick a better place. Like you, your yeah. goal is more successful. Um, so they got and they they all lived in like this little like this little neighborhood, right? Like almost yeah, it's called yeah Knotts Woods, and it was sort of this uh, neighborhood of condominiums that they all seemed to have purchased uh, at different times that were sort of very close to each other. And so they kind of were creating this this uh, group of people that were living there. It wasn't a compound. It was just they lived in close proximity. But, and the center was probably 20 minutes away from there in an industrial park area. So, uh, yeah, Albany, they would get people to move there to be part of the community. And then uh, they would get, you know, people thought, well, if I live in Albany, I'd be closer to the curriculum, closer to the center, closer to what's going on. So many people did move there. And many people actually, which is so interesting to me, when I was going through the 16 day, there was a, a gal... I'm not going to use her name because, you know, she's rebuilding her life. But she was actually recruited through DOS into Nixie, uh, into ESP. Now, that was just blew my mind. And it made sense to me once I went back and revisited that first 16 day and, and how she literally was. This is so crazy. She was shrinking during that 16 day period. And then I saw her again at a coach's summit maybe two months later, and she had lost like 30 pounds. I, I, no, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, <laughs> but I wanted to I want to talk about that, too. But yeah, and that's the thing, guys, like once you give collateral, you're theirs. Like you, yeah. you, you belong to them. And that's coercive. That's kind of like at that point, there's no free will involved. That's coercive right. control. And they get these women and they brand them and, and they, they told them that it was what the elements of nature, but it was like Keith Ranieri's initials initials originally a lot of women were told that it was the four uh elements yes or some some of them were told that it was going to be a tattoo yeah uh so there were other yeah there's a lot of different i got tattoos they're nothing i but brand i mean 
they talk about, we talked about this on the phone last night. A, a couple of them have mentioned in interviews about the smell of human flesh. Just, um, and, and Sarah Edmondson spoke about this and she basically disassociated. Um, and she yeah, I thought yeah. was her being brave and strong was actually her disassociating. And Catherine mm -hmm. Oxford had done some studies that, that, that is typical. They'll do something so traumatic to get you to disassociate. This is like clockwork orange. If you guys remember that, mm -hmm. movie. it's, it's, it's part of mind control is getting you to disassociate. And I mean, it, it took 30, I mean, time is relative, but 30 minutes with you know, she was using a cauterizing, a cauterizing pen, right? A cauterizing pen with no anesthesia. This was a doctor that was doing this and had never, you know, I think she did some practice sessions on somebody else somewhere. I don't know. Uh, that's what I heard. But can you even imagine being held down, changing your mind, your butt being ass held naked, down naked, and way. then changing their mind? What's that? Your butt ass naked, by the way. I think we oh, left yeah, that yeah. out. But they yeah, had clothes on at the house. They've been they've no. been transported naked. <laughs> I, I I still don't know what I would do. Many people ask me if that had happened to you, what would you do? I still don't know, but I think I would have run out naked. I don't know for sure, but I probably would have definitely been tempted to do that because I'm so frightened of pain. Yeah, you know, I really am. But once you're on the table, I don't think you you didn't they have hold a choice. You down. Well, and, and there were people I, were begging. I, 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 a little off subject, but I used to go and get cryotherapy, um, which is you oh, put yourself oh, in a rubber yes, type of yes. and you take your clothes like you, and you hand the, I would go, a girl would take a girl and a guy would take a guy. So if you, you know, but I would throw the robe over and stand there. Well, one of the girls working there told me that when she got the job, they made her do a session so she would experience, so she could experience, to help the clients. And she said they turned the... <laughs> They turn their refrigerator on and then you can push the door open. She busts the door open. Now you're in a room by yourself with another person. So she said, the, the other girls, but she said she took it. She just ran. Oh yeah. Ran outside <laughs> in the middle of Atlanta, Georgia, boobs out. Like just. That just sounds awful. The cold sounds terrible. But so does branding. They both sound bad. I'll take cryotherapy any day over, over Brandy. <laughs> but my boyfriend, my boyfriend, I practiced for a whole week with a broken sacrum once. My boyfriend was like, you have, you would have done that. You would have been like, yeah, I can do this. I'm tough. This is me proving something to myself. He was like, so these women and they're the ones who have been interviewed are tough, smart women, you know? And, you know, you want to, you know, I would have been, do I let these people down? Do I prove that I'm, you know, strong enough? And I will admit this, had I been branded and went through that whole thing, thank God I didn't. But had it happened, my first reaction would be, I am badass, man. Yeah. I just made it through this. I did it. I just don't trust that I would have been able to do it. But, but yeah. if I had, I would have come out of there saying, oh my God. Now later I would have thought, what the hell did I do? But at the time, you just time. you adrenaline. You have master. You, you've gotten through something that most people would never be able to do, and you're being told that too. At the same time, like you're you're doing this amazing thing. Not anybody could just do this. You're so measurable now. You know, you're just you're badass. All of that. So, I don't understand how they. I guess Keith Ranieri didn't think this all the way through. That this was supposed to be a group that was secret from you, even your husband. And some of these women were married. So mm -hmm. it's not like your husband's not going to see you naked. So right. I don't know if he, I mean, this is, this is why I say this was his undoing because you, you, th there was no way. I mean, most, a lot of the women were actually, it's so strange to me, like how, cause and I, and I don't mean to be rude. Uh, I really, but Keith Ranieri to me is so freaking disgusting as a person. Mm -hmm. Like he's not attractive to me. Now with that being said, if he was a really great guy who wasn't a sociopath, then maybe he would be, but to me, he's just not ugh, like, he's not. Yeah. Like, yeah. But he, I heard someone say he had to form a cult to have sex. Otherwise he wouldn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> Probably. So, so, um, but he basically had the inner circle of women. He, it's like it was like a rotating circle. They were all like sleeping with him. Yes, they there were to, eight, and they had there to eight? pledge monogamously to him. Mm -hmm. But he was polyamorous. It's mm -hmm. so like, and then if they had jealousy issues, it was their issue. Correct? Like it was their. Issue. So he he would take them separately. Not all of them knew the extent, most probably, of 
who he was sleeping with, but they all kind of knew on some level. And he would use them against, he would put them against each other. So imagine he had eight first line slaves, right? And each of those slaves were to recruit, I believe, seven more or eight more, I can't remember, seven or eight more slaves, right? That make your second line of slaves. And each of those slaves who had a pot of slaves, those slaves were to report to them and do the acts of kindness for them. So basically, can you go run my errands? Can you clean my house? Whatever. So they, they had to do that. And each of those slaves were to recruit another line of slaves, which I would have been. Imagine me, like, you know, when they got to me, they were at the grape in the bottom of the barrel. I mean, there, Keith wasn't attracted to someone like me. He wanted someone very young. So he did ask to sleep with some of the younger girls in the second line and possibly the third line. But he, I realized after the fact, when they were recruiting me, they had no idea what they were doing. None. Like they were not recruiting someone who was going to be immeasurable and accountable to this thing. I don't have that in me. Yeah. Not like some other people do maybe in the first line or whatever. So to recruit someone like me would have just, it, you knew they had, there was no rhyme or reason to it at that point. It was just a numbers game. Nobody was paying attention. Nobody was thinking about the consequences. And that's when it blew up. It not because of me, but because of everybody was desperate. Is out of control. Yeah, it was. So it he was, would yeah. you see this like he literally I mean, I consider what he did to be kind of to be rape in a lot of ways, because like the 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 master. So from what I what what I saw as a viewer is that Keith Raniere would be like, hey, Allison Mack. And for you guys who don't, Allison Mack was like one of the big celebrities in Nexium. Um, I remember watching Smallville when it was out. Hey, Allison Mack, I want to sleep with this, you know, you know, mm -hmm. young girl, have her task be to seduce me. Yes. And you have this collateral hanging over your head. So these young women who are in their 20s are having to go seduce this gross, disgusting man. It, or their collaterals. I mean, it's so just screwed up. It's so screwed up. And let I want to talk about that too, about the weight, the the weight issue, because I said to you on the phone and the vow, Mark Vicente makes a, a statement. He says they look like zombies, but I said, no, he's making them look like children. Yes. Now, what was their calorie intake daily? I believe it was between five and 800 calories a day. And the reason I, I know this is because I was in Jeunesse at the time, a, a few months before this all blew up. I was in with a bunch of the DOS gals. I didn't know they were in DOS, obviously. And with Allison Mack, and I was with all those guys down in Mexico, in Mexico City. And they were all measuring the amount of food they're eating in the palm of their hand, and they were taking pictures. And I asked a couple of them, because we spent a lot of time together, so why are you taking pictures? Oh, I'm just doing this thing to be more, you know, accountable to what I'm eating. So I want to make sure that um, I'm sending it to my friend who's helping me out with this. You know, I'm sending it to Allison. Or I'm sending it to whoever. And I thought, gosh, you know, that's kind of weird because I was starving all the time, right? And they fed you these vegetarian meals, which is which is great, but it just felt like I was never getting enough food. Um, yeah, it, the whole thing was sort of calorie restricted overall. I mean, they weren't saying you couldn't eat. They were just saying, if you want to be a better, badass person and really be accountable and measurable, you might want to think about how much food do we really need to eat? Do you want to try that as a way, Kelly, to, you know, grow yourself or whatever? And I was like, no, maybe not today. <laughs> next life. Next no. life. <laughs> next time. So, but I mean, it's not to say I would not have done it later on. But at that time, weight was a, for me, wasn't an issue. And I was working on other things. So... And that's what that I, I actually looked up before we came on. I actually struggle to to get. I have I have a problem with. I, I get really skinny, so I forget to eat a lot. I'm very the dosha system of our very vata, and so I count my calories to make sure I'm eating enough. And I I'll make mm -hmm. sure I eat between two thousand and twenty five hundred calories a day. That's what mm -hmm. I try to do to maintain my health. And so I want to put that into perspective. I looked up. I was just curious because I had heard you say this, so I, I wanted you to tell the audience. I looked up to see. I asked, I was like, okay, so if you were to do nothing all day, just lay around, do nothing, how many calories does the average person burn just to be alive and do nothing? The average person just to be alive, this is not yeah. including walking to work, working out, living, doing things, burns 1,400 calories just to maintain life. Yeah. So you have these women, and I think it was seduced. Is it seduced where they talk about like one woman lost her period for like 10 years? 
Yeah, you definitely will lose your period if you're not eating enough, if you don't have enough body fat, for sure. Yeah. I mean, there was a shot of Allison Mack on one of the documentaries, and even my boyfriend was like, oh my God, she looks like like she's about to die. Well, when I saw her in Mexico, which was the last time I physically saw her, I believe, um, which was a couple of months before it all blew up, she was like childlike. Like her body had become... She was so tiny because I had had lunch with her. And of course she was eating like celery and like, I, she used to like to grind up like squash and stuff, and make it into spaghetti, spaghetti squash and eat that. And, and, and I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, the thing, she's so tiny. Like, she's just like, almost like a child. It was yeah. so sad. It's, it's so sick because if you guys watched the documentaries or look into Keith and Aries past, there's some questionable things he's done to under yes. eight girls yes. that's how mm-hmm. i'll say it and i know that he there's there's clips of him talking about where he tried to manipulate basically child abuse when it comes mm-hmm. to these re- i will say relationships because of youtube but he definitely had a problem with this and um and so it's like he was taking these young girls and making them look like children which is mm-hmm. disgusting but on the other hand he was promising these women children so these yes. poor women who wanted to be moms, it's the, I, I, my heart just breaks for, for like Lauren Salt, for some of these women. I hope that they find healing. I hope Allison Mack finds healing. I hope that, that they can undo in their mind because no human life, no human deserves this, none. And let's, let's, uh, so we know with cults, they sometimes will restrict what you eat, um, Yes. I was telling you on the phone last night, my, my teacher in India always thinks we're all too skinny all the time. It's great. You know what? <laughs> Go to India. They'll all tell you you're really skinny. It's fantastic. So. <laughs> um, eat, so eat, eat. Like, like, in India, it's, you're considered sexy to have like a bit of a belly. And so I know a lot of women are like, tell me again. Tell me again. Your word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. It's healthy though. You know, it's healthy to have. Yeah to have if for women i know 25 percent body fat is like the lowest a woman should go because our bodies are have a womb it's it's yeah. different a man can go to like 10 percent body fat but a woman you know you you have a woman's body is a portal you know that's important a woman's body is actually mm-hmm. a portal you know it needs that support and we know that they also do sleep deprivation mm-hmm. we're talking about how hard they would work you of course that has to do with a cognitive when you don't have enough sleep your mind kind of gets loopy and you're very susceptible at that time Mm-hmm. Um, so we see all this happening. And so basically what really blew it up was, well, first of all, Bonnie, her gut got really big, right? And so she pulled away big time and her husband. So, yeah. Bonnie was my coach at that point in March of 2017. She was my coach and she dropped out. She kind of tried to tell me on the phone what was going on, but she couldn't really say anything because she was scared. Yeah. She didn't know if they were going to come after her. They didn't, she didn't know what was going to happen. So I was sort of like, this is weird conversation. I, I'm trying to read between the lines, but I absolutely could not. And so she, she figured it out. I, I don't know if she knew the extent of everything. I don't think she knew about the branding necessarily, but she figured out something was really wrong and she left. And so, um, you know, she was very much into intuition and listening to her own gut. And she did, thankfully. And she's married to a man named Mark Vicente. Mark Vicente. A lot mm-hmm. of people know um, from what the bleep do we know yes. a documentary that got big. And they like honed in on him right after that documentary got big. And I know mm-hmm. that I can see they try, obviously, they try to wedge between husbands and wives. I mean, the whole DOS thing, you can't tell your husband, like, hello. You know, your husband is supposed to be what, the person you, you would tell everyone, you know, like I share everything with my boyfriend. Like I would want to, oh my God, guess what? Like I, I want to tell him everything. Um, So you already, already see them trying to wedge in between um, relationships like that. But it's amazing because Mark Vicente, who was so heavily involved in Nexium and was Keith Ranieri's like best male friend, um, mm-hmm. ended up taking his good on him. He took his wife's side and pulled away yeah. as well. I think that, you know, nobody really had all the information on everything, right? Everybody had bits and pieces. When Bonnie left, you, you know, she she was very clear on herself and why she was leaving. 
you know, Mark probably didn't have all the information and didn't really know. And so I think there, that was probably a very difficult thing for both of them. But at the end of the day, when he saw some more evidence probably of what Bonnie was talking about or what have you, I, I wasn't there for the, for the conversation, so I don't really know. But then he started to see for himself that there were really actually things going on here. He started putting two and two together. And fortunately, he got out and was able yeah. to get out in time where he could start recording some of these things to prove that these things were happening. So again, very brave. They were both, you know, is a tough situation. Yeah. And then Sarah Edmondson was like his best friend. And he started telling her not knowing that she yes. was lost and that she had been branded. And, and she eventually told him. And then that's when he, you know, I think all the lights came on at that point. And then it was much easier to put information together and then to make a real, you know, the decision to get out and help other people get out and expose this whole thing, which, you know, at that time, not knowing, you know, is Claire Bronfman, is Keith, are they going to come after us? Are they going to sue us? Are they going to, I mean, so, there was just so much money to use to do that. No, for the collateral. I mean, I heard, was it you that said they still don't, they don't even know where the collateral is still? Uh, as far as I know, they don't know where the collateral is. They, I'm sure somebody knows where it is. I just, you know, I think, you know, Sarah had a lot of collateral on her that still, and in India, many people had collateral that could be out there somewhere. It hasn't been, to my knowledge, hasn't been exposed and may never be, hopefully. Maybe the FBI has it. I don't know. Um, it's um, and so Sarah, they got and, and Nippy, her husband. I just realized rewatching that he's an Atlanta boy. He's from my hometown. I was like, oh yeah, he looks like an Atlanta boy. Um, so and and he the ang you see the anger in him, and I can imagine yeah. for men. I mean, we talk about all the women stuff, women stuff, but men have, you know, men do have a lot of men do have that where they want to protect, they want to be, they want to protect their family and to feel that. I, the one, he's like you branded my fucking wife like right like, yeah my wife you know yeah. and, and she was extremely brave to do that the new york times picked it up and it got to the point where it the story could not be ignored at that point because it was just so sensational and so uh moira penza was that her name mm -hmm. i i like her and this is what I like. And she said this. I don't know if it was a podcast where she was like, this chap's my ass. Like, he taught that there were no victims, but now he's the ultimate victim. Yeah. <laughs> and here's this, like, woman who's beautiful, smart, young, yeah. and she took his ass down. And you were there. So he mm -hmm. got He basically fled the United States to Mexico. Yes. He got arrested in Mexico. And since then, he has not been. He's. He never. He did not make bail, did he? They kept him. No, they extradited him through Texas, then to MDC in New York, and he's been there. Was there until after the trial, and I believe he's in uh, Arizona now. I'm not exactly sure. That's in that security prison, which I'm like, ha ha ha. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> and she used to come into court. More uh, Penza would come into court wearing, you know gorgeous you know skirt suit and heels and very feminine and she would just walk in there and i remember i was there for a few days of the trial when laura lauren salzman was testifying and i was uh, that's when we were filming with seduced and they were kind enough to take me with them so i could actually see what was going on in the court which was so amazing for me because it really brought everything home for me to see this happening and realize, oh my God, this is really happening and it's really true. But she would come in in her heels and her amazing outfits and just kick ass in court. It was just so fun to see, watch her in action. She was amazing. She was like really passionate about just under Absolutely. She seemed to have a level of understanding of what he had done to these women. Mm -hmm. And so let's, let's look at you. So you were asked to join DOS. You were asked for the collateral. I know you said some, I remember you saying an interview, some stuff came out that was like, you felt, go as that. like, was it the Frank report where you were like, oh, this sounds weird. But then you saw the collateral and you were like, oh, what? So, what? yeah. So in that, in that time frame where I was sort of not answering the phone very much and trying to avoid the conversation around joining DOS or the vow as it was explained to me, uh, uh, someone called me from Canada and they said on WhatsApp and they said, have you seen the Frank? Have you seen the Frank report? And I said, what are you talking about? Nobody reads a Frank report. And she said, I got to send you this link, but don't tell anyone I sent it to you because they'll come after me. And she hung up and I thought, oh my gosh. So of course I clicked the link and I'm reading the 
a blog post that talks about these branded sex slaves. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what are they talking about? This is all baloney. You know, this they're Thank trying you. to take Nixium down, whatever. And then I read a little bit more and they said they're asking these women for collateral. And as soon as I saw that word, I, I, I was like, oh my gosh. So I called this person and I said, is this what you were trying to get me to join? And she said, yes. And I don't remember exactly what happened after that. I might have hung up on her. I don't know what I did. I was so shocked, but I was just sitting there and this wave came through me from the right side to the left, all the way through my body and then back. And it said, Keith is evil. And I, I still get chills because it just left my body. And then I thought, I just had this weird, how could that be? Keith can't be evil. He couldn't be behind this. He's the guy that's created this curriculum. He's the guy that's helping everybody. How could I have that thought? Like Keith, and it was like somebody said to me, Keith is evil. And then it's because no one at the point at this point really knew Keith was behind it. Yeah. They were suspecting true. now, were but not that he, but this was a girl's thing by themselves. They, all driven by Alison you know, Mack and Lauren Salzman and these women. This is their idea. And but the voice came through and told me, you know, wake up now. That's your, so. that's God. That's your guy. Mm -hmm. That's your protect. And I just, I, I, when I think about your story, Kelly, I'm like, oh my God, you just, you, it just came right in. And, and it was like, no, she's not going down this road because then all of a sudden, yeah. when did the New York times article come out and in, into, in, in in, so you got the Frank report. At what point did the New York times article then come out? I want to say that came out probably in October of that year. So we're talking May of 2017 is when Frank report blew it open. And I think it was October. You got to look on the internet, but it was something like October ish. So it was a few months later. Cause I ended up actually teaching coaching another session in Albany right after this happens, because I still, like I said, yes, Keith is evil, but I still didn't believe it. I still didn't have any information on this. Nobody was talking about it. Everybody was hush hush about it. So I had already signed up to teach or to coach a, a um, intensive. So I ended up going, but while I was in Albany, things were just flying everywhere. People were leaving like crazy. Nancy, oh, it was just a nightmare. I spent a lot of time with Nancy there. And then I left and went away with my family, we went um, on a long trip. And during that time, I had time to think and eat and rest and kind of not talk to anybody and it, I was out on a paddleboard one day, we were in Croatia, and it just like dawned on me, oh my God, you're in a cult. You, you, I think you're in a cult. And it was sort of from there, I started really looking into it and getting out and all that. But it was just really one of those moments where you're quiet long enough to realize what the heck has happened to you. And that's why they yeah. don't, that's why high control groups don't want you leaving. Yeah, exactly. Or eating properly, sleeping properly, and drinking told, properly. <laughs> you told a story about a girl who went to sell her computer and yes, that one bite of cake brought her clarity back. What was uh -huh. that? Was she in DOS? So my understanding is that she, is she was um, in DOS and she hadn't been branded yet. Now, I don't know the, all the specifics on this one, but she we needed money for something within the organization, probably to buy more curriculum or something. And so she wanted to go sell her computer. So she went to a cafe to sell her computer to some random person on, you know, Craigslist or something. And this person bought her a piece of cake and she wasn't allowed to eat cake. This was on the starvation calorie restriction diet. But she said, what the heck, I'll eat it anyway. And she ate the cake and it gave her enough glucose in her brain to realize what the heck am I doing selling them my last possession, my computer yeah, to make a couple hundred dollars to do whatever. And it, that's when she got out and she left. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing how, I mean, this, I, it's so interesting, you know, in, in yoga, we talk a lot about friction and I talk a lot about mm -hmm. friction here on my channel and, you know, we're in a, we're on a, a planet of polarity. So with polarity, there's opposing forces, which creates friction. Yeah. And even the practice, we're generating friction, which turns into sweat. And I tell my students all the time, or, or the viewers too, like you look at a match, a match has everything it, it it needs to light, but it can't light unless it's brushed up against the mat, creates the friction. Mm -hmm. And when I look at you guys and your stories, and I just think, 
oh my God, like you were given this monumentous friction, but the, the bigger the friction, the bigger the light can shine. Mm -hmm. Like how God, universe, source almost used you guys to expose, to shine a light on something that is so evil, like Keith Raniere. And out of everybody in this story, he's the one that's evil. Everybody mm -hmm. else were victims that turned into abusers. You yeah. know, he was the puppet master. And how amazing it is that you guys have been able, I always say, the more my heart breaks, the more the light can shine through. You know, like the more we break, the more the light can actually shine through. And yeah. how unbelievably and i know i mean i listen i know malignant narcissist i've never been up against a malignant narcissist that was as powerful as keith raniere but the ones i have dealt with it's scary they're mm -hmm. scary because they yeah. don't have the boundaries that a normal human has they don't have the empathy the compassion it is no all they really have is rage and anger if you don't treat yeah. them the way they want to be treated and yeah. so it's it's a lot i hope people really mm -hmm. understand like how much that took it took for you to write your book it took for the new york i mean it's it's it really it, it, you guys were an army that you were david's that took down a goliath and i know claire bronfman she's what eight years i think like seven yeah seven and a half or something like that she yeah. i think she's getting yeah, it shortened a bit has she, has she denounced him because i know a lot of other no. people have no she still has no. not denounced him no and that's so you you're never i mean that's a problem i mean listen like the brothel yeah. sisters could have done whatever they wanted in life they could have bought their own country and lived there by themselves like you know like i know i know this happened to them yeah and i don't know what she's gonna do when she gets out i don't know where she's gonna be on the spectrum of all of this i mean there's still people they're very much supporters of nixium as you know and keith ranieri and he and it's very sad to, for them, for me to understand and watch that these people that I love and care about cannot see the bad stuff that he did, even though he did some good things. And one of the things that is so important for people to understand, I think, or at least for me, is that bad people can do good things. So don't, you know, don't be taken by surprise. And we always think that good people do good things and sometimes good people can do bad things. But we never really think about these bad people do good things because these good things sort of cover up that they're bad people because it takes you by surprise. You don't expect it. No, I think Nancy Salzman kind of says like what like once she said something like, oh, like when you see her having her realization, mm -hmm. she's like, did he create all this good just so he could do bad? And that's very confusing. Yeah. It was somebody watching from the outside who's seeing like decades in the making in like a you know few hour window yeah you're like mm -hmm. you can see it but but for somebody who's been in the inside and you know i know a lot of people have a question mark over nancy salzman and i you know as an outsider watching watching you can tell she was just very mentally abused and she became a massive abuser in yeah. the process and um I don't envy her healing process to have to go back and untangle all those tangled webs. Um, I I believe if Nance, from what I saw, I don't know her, if she had not ever met Keith Raniere, she probably would be a very successful, healthy person doing good in the Most world. Probably. I think so. I mean, that's my belief that that would be the case. And I think it's so hard to define where the victim perpetrator line is right and, and and i think with the judge and the sentencing he really spent a lot of time trying to figure that out and i think for the audiences too uh, people around the world looking at everyone in this situation other than keith has to be try to have some compassion for being a human being who can make mistakes and continue to make mistakes sometimes even when you know you're making them because you've been abused and you are indoctrinated into into something you don't even understand. And so for me, I try really hard, really hard since I know these people, not to put so much judgment on them and just try to understand, you know, I don't really know where that line is. That's not my place. But always to have an open heart for them to maybe see the truth at some point, you know, that, the one that hopefully really is Lauren. Lawrence, for some yes. reason. Lauren Salzman, like, 
I have, I have a hard time and maybe it's because she didn't speak on camera. And so there's still kind of a mystery, but listening to the phone, I was telling you on the phone, there's a recording of her and Sarah and yeah. she was Sarah's master and also her best friend. So we were talking mm -hmm. about your, a girlfriend that you trust with your life, you know, with yeah. your kids. And she had given her collateral to, to Lauren. And when Sarah was starting to wake up, they were having this con and it's recorded. And Lauren was saying the typical cult stuff to her, the culty stuff to her. But at one, there's this moment, I know people talk about you have your cult personality, and you have your real personality. And mm -hmm. there's this moment in the conversation where it's a split second. I don't think I noticed it the first time. It was like the second or third time Yeah. where you hear Lauren's voice kind of switch. And she goes, okay, Sarah, I'll get rid of your collateral. Like all of a sudden she went from being a cult member to being Sarah's best friend. And in that moment, my heart just broke. And then seeing when, when they find out that Lauren Salzman did not get any prison time. She was the one that did not get any prison. It was time served. She's just on probation. And to see Sarah break down and cry. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, Lauren is not a bad person. No, oh, I yeah. In my experience with her, she is not a bad person ever. Um, she did some bad things, but she, you know, <laughs> underlying all of us was this thing that we knew looked weird to the outside world right we knew being inside that we outside looking in looked kind of weird and that would come up very often i think in that conversation that came up for lauren for a moment where she went okay this is this is messed up and this isn't right to do this to my friend to exp you know the collateral and then of course i'm sure she went right back into the her indoctrinated self questioning oh my gosh i'm not doing the right thing i'm not being measurable but but that's her humanness, right? That's coming through. And that's why I just, you know, it's really hard having been inside and understanding who these people are and understanding that people on the outside don't really can't see all of that and understand that these are people like you and me that got into a situation that was way over their head, did not know how to get out without losing everything. I mean, losing their whole community, sometimes families, everything didn't know how to ex extricate themselves and and then ended up doing some bad things and and that that is such a hard a hard thing and it's still i keeps me up at night they they did bad things to survive it, i really believe they were trying your your rights i know they practice shunning and it's not there is no there's no black and white when it i mean with keith ranieri there's definitely he's yeah a, i don't think that anybody will argue that he is probably one of the most somebody was saying is one of the most horrific cult leaders to ever yes. live yeah, um yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, awful he's just awful and um and like i mean i just want to kick him in the balls like i just yeah. I, I just uh, he's disgusting and um i just i i i don't know if if these ladies scour youtube but um, I hope that these, the Lauren Salzman, and like I said, she's the one that really got me. Like, I hope she understands that she's still young. She's still got, and the world, I think a lot of people in the world, I know you get, you get your assholes. Absolutely. You get your trolls, but yeah, I think a lot of women, especially can, can see the gray there and, and her I life. Hope so. Yeah. And I, I, it makes me like, she's so beautiful they're all be everybody i mean that's i mean nexium could have been like a a, a panty pro v commercial like it's a, <laughs> it's, it's beautiful people like it's i mean like i will say that about keith and mary he had good taste in women uh, it, it, it it is you know it's kind of weird when you look at it that way and you but you realize like i said you know you've got people recruiting people that are like themselves and yeah. that's how that sort of propagated i suppose and um it was like we all just when we would get together for like V week and things like that, you're with this community of people who are on their best behavior, That's right? So because every, everybody's, everybody's trying to be their best person. And so, you know, you're having this amazing time. This like almost like a utopian society that when I look back on it, I'm like, it wasn't even real, but was part of it real. We all wanted it to be real. We all wanted to have that hum human exchange with each other that was a little bit higher than the normal exchange, you know, where we were caring about each other and loving each other and, and, and doing all these things that were just really fun. And so that to me, you know, you look back and you're like, how much of that was real? So do you throw the baby out with the bathwater? And so now I've come to a place where you just, 
you, you take the good pieces with you and well i i i would say let the rest go i think it is because the memories you have with probably i mean i don't know you're the only person from nexium i know um but from what i see and perceive from everybody you had those experiences with were, were real humans so i don't i think it was real i think the love was real and i heard someone say once like you know first couple the, the beginning of a cult is always fun you know yeah you stick around and i think that you you were all seekers and you were all people trying to be the best version of yourself and taking yeah. accountability for your to try to be better and so i think it remove keith from the situation I, I think it was real i think that that i mean i wasn't there but just as an outsider looking in yeah i see friends i see friends yeah. who really care about each other and I even you're like-minded yeah. like-minded people on trying to make the world a better place and be kind to each other and so there was a safety feeling in this right you're in this community that feels really safe and you trust people and you know you think you're doing something good you don't uh, don't you don't wake up in the morning and go oh i think i'll join a cult today you know you <laughs> you, you you join a community <laughs> you join a, a movement you know an ideology you're, you're joining something yeah. not a cult <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no it's, it's, it's not that, and i hope and i think people are starting to understand that more and more and more as more and that's why your job and everybody's job your your part this is part of your what we'd say in yoga part of your dharma this is mm -hmm. and that's powerful this is not your karma this is your dharma you came to earth to expose this and from a very spiritual perspective which keith ranieri is probably not going to want to hear but your soul <laughs> Because he, I don't think he likes that. Because you <laughs> do you know. think you read my book? I don't I, think so. I, you know, it's like he's wondering that with like narcissists. Are they like? Is he like googly eyed? Who's talking about me today? You know? Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. He's just gonna sign coffee. <laughs> yeah, really. Here you go. <laughs> hey, fuck you. Like, <laughs> um, um, you know, uh, I, I just, I, I think that you guys all of you went on a mission together your souls knew each other and i know that sounds mm -hmm. very spirit we're very spiritual in this channel we get into the the woo woo but you know like your souls said we're gonna do this together and we're gonna we're gonna stop this man from hurting other people yeah you know, so yeah your soul was like i can take this i'm br i can do sarah edmondson you know lauren yeah. Salzman. your soul was like you know what we're old souls we've been through hell and back in multiple lives we can take on this piece of shit so other yeah. people don't have to and so and yeah. that's and that's real and that's the the bravery the courage all of that is real it's all real and so i would not you know take the good leave the bad and mm -hmm. and uh, i know you've got you've got a killer book now and you're able to use your wisdom through that friction came wisdom and and that wisdom is only granted through experience and um and you're helping people know not not don't what they don't not to look like even at, yeah even at a yoga studio like everything can be twisted and your teacher should not be telling you what to eat should not mm -hmm. be telling you what to eat when our students come to us about nutritional stuff we back away we say you know you can look at the dosha system but you need to go see an ayurvedic doctor for that like Go to a nutrition right. that's not our place um right. i know with therapy we and and our shala if, if a student is having a really hard time with something we have a stack of therapists yeah so, good yoga, great that's responsible it yeah is. i've been through trauma therapy my boyfriend's been through like yoga is great but have you tried talk therapy like that's really yeah oh, really and so you know if you're in a, in a situation where people are not letting you reach for outside sources you know you can have friends outside of the if you're in the yoga world you're allowed to have friends outside of the yoga world you know you're you're you have to understand that your what you experience in life is just it's not your life it's yeah. just to support your life there's no one person or one thing out there that has the answer for you and and that's just a really important thing to remember we're always trying to find the answer through another person they have the answer they, they've got the information but they may have pieces of the information for you or clues but at the end of the day it always comes back around to you you have all the answers and that is you know in your connection to your god which comes back around to the relationship with yourself 
And that's where all the answers are. You not, may not be able to find them right away in, in the moment, but they're here right here. And that's the biggest thing I learned in my experience with the cult because I was looking for that answer and I got myself in a whole lot of trouble. And when I came out, I was so worried about any organization, even talking to people because I didn't, I didn't trust myself anymore. And so it took a couple of years to build that trust back with myself. But I also realized every time I wanted to reach out for an answer or join a club or, or an organization or whatever, it was like, whoa. And so I look at it through the lens of a cult using that, what we talked about earlier, that C-U-L-T, you know, it does it have a charismatic leader as a utopian society, all of that. And even my first experience in an um, Ashtanga Shala yesterday, um, which kicked my butt to no end. And I was an absolute train wreck in the middle of the class. So that's where she put me. Um, I was always looking around and listening to the teacher, running it through my filter. Is this, is this, are there signs here? Are there flags here? And that's just me maybe being a little that's over. Normal. That's normal. Very- but you need to be that as yeah. a human being in any situation looking for those things. Because if they're there, if it looks like a duck and acts like a duck, guess what? It is yeah. a duck. Yeah. And that's so healthy. And I'm going to say that too, because even in the, even though my teacher in, in India, the Parm guru is very, he's very boundary oriented. We don't go to his house. We don't socialize mm-hmm. him with I any, mean, he's very strict with boundaries. Um, and, and I was telling you, we get up at Brahma Morta for early morning practice, but he's very concerned that we're like, he really wants to make sure we're getting enough sleep, which is yeah. a sign that he's not a cult leader. He's really, you know, are you, are you, go, are you getting enough yeah. sleep? You know? Um, and, you know, we're, we're very strict with that, with our students where we have, we don't, we don't, you know, we don't tolerate, don't lionize a teacher. A teacher is just a Te- like we're still i had it the yoga guy on yesterday and it's like t- we're human beings we're we're fallible too you know yeah. the only thing that makes me a teacher is i've just done this for like 17 years so i can mm-hmm. maybe help you not make a mistake like hurt yourself you know mm-hmm. but even our guru would say like and that's the thing too guys like, as i said you if, if a teacher is having you call them a guru or a yogi or vanguard or master or anything red flag run red flag run um that's not, you know, it's, it's, um, and our Guruji though, we would call him Guruji. He would say one time telling, two time telling, three time God telling. Mm-hmm. There's a point where the teacher has to back away and let the, and that, and so I had a really mm-hmm. good influences from that. Like you, your job is not to control your job is to teach the practice and then back away and let mm-hmm. them live their life because it's their life. They have their karma to live to. Um, and so mm-hmm. even in Ashtanga Shala guys, if you go into an Ashtanga Shala and the teacher is very controlling, find another one. I'll mm-hmm. send you a list of teachers, find another one. You don't deserve, you know, there's, we're really big about non not lionizing, like do not lionize the teacher. The teacher is just your teacher. That's it. The reason why we don't practice in front of our students is because we don't want our students to pick up our bad habits because we know we have them. So mm-hmm. we have our own, ba- so I, I, that's so important. And yes, every situation, even a therapist, even a fit, a gym, have your, if something doesn't feel right, it's not right. Right. It's not yeah. right. It might just be it's not right for you. It might not be that the organization's a cult. It might just not be right for you. Yeah. Listen yeah. to your gut. Listen to your it might not make sense to you. It doesn't matter. That's God speaking. You know? And so and so I I, I just thank you, Kelly, so much for being so brave to share mm-hmm. your story and 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 to really step forward. I know that's really hard to do. You know, it's really hard to do. And, um, and I appreciate, it. I just, I adore you. I just, I feel like I've known you. <laughs> <laughs> we probably go way, way back many, many, many <laughs> lifetimes. <laughs> I was like, I'm that chick. I'm going to contact that chick. <laughs> I normally don't even answer people on Instagram that much, you know, cause you get, yeah. you just get weird stuff. Micah, she looks like she might be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're doing a <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I actually, so Kelly, I know this is on like, on the film, I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. I would love for you to come back. And I would love for you to talk about your journey in Reiki as well. Not necessarily oh, yeah. about cult stuff, but just like you as a person and your journey through Reiki and your journey in the spiritual world, because that's what we talk about a lot on my channel. And yeah. so, you know, you're not just Kelly from the cult, although that would be a cool <laughs> rap song. <laughs> so, from the block, Kelly from the cult. So, <laughs> right, a whole, 
<laughs> the whole thing on that. Yeah, I would love to. Cause that's a really interesting story how that all came about. And yeah. I would love uh, I would love that I, if you I, came back and talked about Yeah, that. I would love to. I would love to. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear your um, input too uh, around Reiki and your experience with that too, because yeah, it's fascinating. Uh, it's so fascinating. And that, that's a lot, like I said, a lot of the viewers on this channel, they're new to spirit. A lot of them are new. Some of them have been around for a while in the spiritual world, but they're very new. And so I'm glad that they were doing this too, because for new people whose you know eyes are wide, wow, this cool world, so easy to get sucked into. By so easy. And so I'm so, so yeah. grateful for you for like, you know, being like, hold up. Not so fast there, Tiger. Let's talk about these things because this can happen. As as my boyfriend said, he was like, you would have done this. Like, you totally would have, like, <laughs> you would have <been> branded and <laughs> you would have been, like, finding money from your parents and anywhere else you want, you know? So, you know, <laughs> this is, this is all of us. We've all done, we've all, you know, churches can be called. I mean, it, it, it's not, it's, it's, it's happens to all of us, this stuff. And so we're, you know, one of my favorite Ram Dass quotes is we're all walking mm. each other home. I love that one. We're all that's my favorite and so kelly and all the nexium people are holding hands with the scientology people and <laughs> the, the people who are new like come on we're gonna hold your hand through this so you don't have to go through what we've yeah. been through and that's that's right such an incredible path an honorable path to take it's a servant you are you are serving humanity right now you're doing what you set out to do when you join nexium you're doing it right now and that's what's an, it's, yeah. it's a 180 you know, where you're actually actually more like a 360 because you're come right back to the why you did this to begin with. Mm -hmm. Now you're doing it. Now you have the friction to actually do it. So that's amazing. And so, guys, mm -hmm. and also any questions that you have for Kelly um, regarding anything? I, I mean, obviously, not no inappropriate questions. We're just going to delete those and probably block you. But because um, we <laughs> we know that trolls exist, but um, we can do that. <laughs> yeah, and we can block you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I block the fundamentalist Christians all the time. So <laughs> I I know so many people have told me I'm going to hell because I'm reading oh. the Bible. Um, I'm, we're scandalous over here. <laughs> anyway, any questions you have for Kelly about um, her journey or if you're you have a question about like, even if something looks weird in your life and you maybe want to get input, I, I would welcome that in the comment section below. Um, obviously don't put anybody's name down that isn't here to consent to that. But um, yeah, so I just, I just love you, Kelly. And I think I see like yeah. great, beautiful things happening for you in the future. And I thank you for doing this and being mm -hmm. shedding light on this and, and, and for writing your book and being so vulnerable to humans. We're all just humans. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. I would love to come back. Awesome. And awesome. Can I add just one quick thing? Yes. Yes, of course. If, any, if anyone out there is struggling with cults or know someone in a cult or you're in one yourself, seduceddocumentary.com, it's a website, has tons of um, information and referrals and resources right there on that website. So, I will put that. So you said it's seducedocumentary.com? Yes, seducedocumentary.com. And it's a great place. I mean, there's many other places for resources, but that's just one that kind of has a lot in one place that people that I'm familiar with, that I trust, um, that could help in situations. So Yeah, I will put that in the description box below. Thank you for bringing that up. Awesome. I do know one thing too, if you have a family member who is heavily indoctrinated in, the cult, in, in a cult, it's not as easy as just being like, hey, you're oh, in no, a cult. No. Um, and you guys can yeah. watch Seduced. If you haven't seen Seduced, the documentary that um, Kelly is in a lot, you'll see uh, India goes back through her struggle with Catherine Oxenberg, her mother. Yeah. They really risked a lot to try to get her daughter out. And so, um, yeah, there are resources. I know there are therapists that work specifically with cult survivors, deprogramming. Um, so just be very patient with yourself and with everybody. And um, absolutely. Thank you for telling me that, Kelly. I will put that in the description box. And I'll also put it tomorrow. I'll put it up on my community tab as well. Just awesome. Thank you. Soon. Yeah, absolutely. That's what and we're Fox Fox Tubi just had, I have a new branded and brainwashed um, documentary I just did uh, that just came out on Fox Tubi, which is a free streaming channel. Not sure it's a, if it's available in Europe because I was in Mexico when it came out and I couldn't get it. So I'm, I'm assuming it might just be like two Fox Tubi, uh, T U B I. It's a, it's a um, streaming channel through Fox. If you just put in foxtubi.com, you can okay. register. 
with your email, then verify your email, and then you can watch whatever is on. It's alternative. They call it alternative streaming, but there's all kinds of stuff on there. And um, interesting thing. What's, what's this one called? Uh, brand, branded and brainwashed. Branded and brainwashed. All right. I will, it's, I will put that it's a good um, one. in the description box as well. Um, you guys, and I will tell you, like I said, I've watched Seduced in the Vow multiple times, and I'm not, I'm not bored every time because you just – this is why we read the same books over and over again is because so much more information mm. pops out at you each time you watch it that you miss the first time. And this is the hero story. This is again, as I said in the beginning, Kelly, this is why I think people are so, I think at first they're attracted because it's sensational, but then after a while, it's just such an amazing story of, of survivors and thrive. Like you not only like survive, you came out kicking, you all came out kicking together and put this man away and you are thriving now and that is such a testament to the human spirit and what the that the resilience i mean the resilience of a human spirit to be able to do this is unbelievable we're, we're always stronger than we think we are not in a culty way not in a go brand yourself kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for what you're doing too you're doing a spectacular job and oh, thank, thank you, you so much thank you awesome well i can't wait to have you on again so <laughs> okay, that sounds awesome time, guys okay bye everybody bye